Okay, so we are going to optimize a Norman window. Um, brace yourself, there is a lot of algebra in this. I'll go as slowly as I possibly can, and you can fast forward and play around and rewind, whatever you need to. Um, but this is a fairly algebra-intensive optimization problem. So the problem is, um, they say, if the perimeter of the window is 8 feet, find the value of x, and they've given us that x is the, the width of the base here, so that the greatest possible amount of light is admitted. So what they're asking us to do is optimize the area. They want us to maximize area. So that's, that's something to keep in mind at this point, that the thing that we're going to have to take a derivative of is going to be area. So let's figure out what the area of this thing is in the first place, or what a formula for the area is going to be. So we have that this, this width here is x. Let's go ahead and call the height y. So let me see if I can actually write on here. So I've got these two sides that are both y. And then I have this semicircle at the top. That's the characteristic of a Norman window. It's a rectangle with a semicircle on top. So since this is a semicircle, it's got a radius. And that radius is going to be equal to 1 half of x, so x over 2. So that's going to be important for us. They've told us what the perimeter equals. So they've said that the perimeter equals 8. Let's come up with a formula for perimeter, though. So perimeter is going to be just going all the way around this thing. So if I do that, I've got 1x, I've got two y's, these two y's, and then I have half of the circumference of a circle. And so if we remember from, uh, from geometry, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, but I've only got, oops, not that, I've only got one half of that. So one half 2 pi r. But there are a whole bunch of things that we can do to simplify this, because at the end of the day, we're going to have to do the area, right? We're going to have to take the derivative of area, and I'm going to need that in terms of one variable. So I've basically got to get this whole thing down to just x and no other variable. So let's see if we can do that. So we've got x plus 2y plus, well, 1 half pi r, or 1 half 2 pi r is just going to be pi r. But we have that r equals x over 2. So this is going to be x plus 2y plus pi times x over 2. And so we could write that a little bit more neatly as x plus 2y plus pi over 2 times x. And now if we combine those two x terms and factor out the x, we're going to get 2y plus 1 plus pi over 2 times x. And we know from the problem that that equals 8. So we can use that to figure out what y equals, because we're going to need to know what y equals in order to fill that in into our formula for area. So let's go ahead and do 2y plus 1, oops, write this, plus 1 plus pi over 2x equals 8. I'm going to solve this and just we'll go we'll go slowly we'll make sure that we get everything in here. So I'm going to do 2y equals 8 minus 1 plus pi over 2x. So I've just sent that over to the other side and now I have to multiply, well not multiply, divide both sides by 2. So I get 8 minus 1 plus pi over 2x divided by 2. So if I simplify that, I'm going to get 4 minus 1 half times 1 plus pi over 2x. And if I distribute that 1 half, I'm going to get 4 minus 1 half plus pi over 4x. And now if I combine those two terms inside the parentheses, I'm going to get 4 minus 2 plus pi over 4x. And that's just getting a common denominator there. So play around with that if you're not comfortable with it. But that's what we're going to get. So that's what y equals. So that's great. We know what the perimeter is. We use that to figure out what y equals. So now let's 
find the function that we need to optimize, and that's the area. So area, let's go back up and look at the picture. The area is just going to be the area of the rectangle plus the area of the semicircle. So it's going to be x times y plus 1 half pi r squared. That's going to give us the area that we're trying to optimize. So we have x times y plus 1 half pi r squared. And the 1 half pi r squared just comes from, again, from um, geometry, the area of a circle, but we only have half a circle here. All right, so let's start plugging stuff into this because we need to get rid of the y and we need to get rid of the r. So first I'm going to get rid of the r because that's a little bit cleaner to do. So that's 1 half pi, and we remember from beginning, from earlier in the problem that the radius was just x over 2 squared. Okay, so that's going to give me x, y plus, uh, what do we have, pi over 8, oops, pi over 8 x squared. So I'm getting that by 1 times pi, 2 times 2 squared, so that's 2 times 4 in the denominator here, and then the x squared. And I'm just separating out the x squared because it's going to be easier to deal with. Now we need to plug in that y that we found. So that's x times 4 minus 2 plus pi over 4 x, and then plus pi over 8 x squared. So I'm going to distribute this x. I'm going to get 4x minus 2 plus pi over 4 x squared plus pi over 8 x squared. And then at this point I can factor out the x squared. All right, so let's do that. 4x minus, I'm going to factor out the x squared, so that's going to leave me with 2 plus 4. Now keep in mind that this was a minus x squared, so when I factor it out of here, that's going to leave me with negative pi over 8. And let's see, fix my parentheses, yep. So these two things are equivalent. Um, for the sake of making this easier to look at now, let's uh, move the x squared over. So this is, I'm just rearranging the terms here. So I've got 2 plus pi over 4 minus pi over 8 x squared. And let's simplify the stuff inside the parentheses. Again, everything that we do now is going to save us some time later in having to simplify things. All right, so this is going to give us 4 plus 2 pi minus pi over 8, again, common denominator, um, x squared. And so this is going to give me 4x minus 4 plus pi over 8 x squared. Okay? Um, so I've got something now that's just in terms of x that's actually going to be really easy to take the derivative of, which we have to do for every single optimization problem. So if this was my area function, then my derivative is going to be 4 minus 2 times 4 plus pi over 8 x. That's not so bad. I can live with that. Let me go ahead and distribute that too. 4, if I distribute the 2, 2 and the 8 are going to cancel each other out, and we're going to end up with 4 plus pi over 4 times x. So we have a derivative, and in order to optimize something, to find a minimum or a maximum, we have to set the derivative equal to 0. All right, so 4 minus 4 plus pi over 4 times x equals 0. So we get 4 plus pi over 4x equals 4. I moved it over to the other side, changed the signs on both of them. So that's going to give me x equals 4 over 4 plus pi over 4. And dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. That's probably going to be the easiest way to look at this. So we have 4 times 4 
over 4 plus pi, which is going to give us 16 over 4 plus pi. And that is what x equals, and that's what they were asking for. So this was kind of an epic journey of a lot of algebra, but they wanted to know what the x was so that the greatest possible amount of light was admitted. So we had to find the perimeter and get that in terms, or you find the perimeter, use that to figure out what y was so that we could then plug y into our formula for area, get area in terms of just x's and x squared, take the derivative of it, set the derivative equal to zero and solve, and that gave us our final answer of x equals 16 over 4 plus pi. So take your time, go back through that, make sure you understand the algebra, um, but at the end of the day every optimization problem is about finding what they want you to optimize, finding a way to turn that into a function that has just one variable in it, and they will always give you enough information to do that. There will always be other information that will let you take that, that in this case, area function, and get rid of any of the variables that, that you don't want. So if I wanted in terms of x, I was able to get rid of y, and I was able to get rid of r in order to get what I needed so that I could take a simple derivative, set the derivative equal to zero, and solve for x.